Unless you've cancelled your Netflix subscription, or you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen that a new animated Scott Pilgrim show has been released. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World gave us an instant cult classic with an amazing cast of characters and the unique video game-esque world that we were able to discover with Scott. Now that the new Scott Pilgrim series, Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, is out, with the original voice cast I might add, I immediately binged the entire season. One theme in particular stood out to me, and today we're dissecting Scott Pilgrim Takes Off as we look at the pure Eternus. Spoilers ahead for anyone who hasn't seen the show yet. So just a quick recap if you've already forgotten what happens this season. Again, spoilers ahead. Scott is a 20-something year old who spends his days in a questionable relationship with a girl named Knives and playing bass in his band Sex bob -omb. He doesn't have much ambition, that is, until he meets his literal dream girl, Ramona Flowers. After talking about Sonic the Hedgehog for way too long, Ramona leaves and Scott is dead set on getting to know who Ramona is. He eventually gets the scoop and finds a way to see her again. After a first date, Scott finds himself confronted by one of seven evil exes from Ramona's past. Where Scott Pilgrim takes off as a unique story from its movie counterpart is in the first fight against Matthew Patel. In Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Scott wins against Matthew, turning him into a heap of coins. In Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, Scott is turned into coins when he loses to Matthew Patel. Or so we think. Ramona isn't convinced that Scott is dead, and she goes right into detective mode looking for him. It's revealed that Scott was abducted and is currently in a future timeline where Scott and Ramona got married, but then ended up getting a divorce. Old Scott was never able to get over the divorce, and he wants to stop young Scott from ever marrying Ramona. Eventually, young Scott makes his way back to present day, and finds that he's unable to kiss Ramona. This is the work of even older Scott, who's trying to stop Scott and Ramona from being together. Eventually, they're able to kiss and defeat even older Scott, and Scott and Ramona get their happily ever after. The pure Eternus is one of the archetypes discussed by Carl Jung, and as with all archetypes, has a positive and negative aspect to it. The positive pure Eternus is characterized as creative potential. This is the eternal youth who embodies vitality and creativity. The negative pure Eternus is unable to leave adolescence behind and grow into adulthood. The phrase, failure to launch, is apt for the negative pure Eternus. Individuals can embody the pure Eternus, and Jungian analyst Marie-Louise von Franz details such individuals in her book, The Problem of the Pure Eternus. Sometimes called Peter Pan Syndrome, individuals who are deemed pures often find themselves stuck in perpetual youthfulness. The issue with this is the stagnation that the peers find themselves in and their inability to participate in life. According to Von Franz, the peer is always able to find the hair in the soup. Typically, things are never quite right. The peer may find a nice woman to spend his life with, but then may find that something just isn't quite right with her. They may find themselves in a favorable job, but they really wish to be elsewhere so they quit their job. They're always waiting for their fantasy to come true, but have no power to pursue it outside of fantasy. Von Franz states that one of the symptoms of being a peer is Don Juanism. This occurs when men are womanizers and are unable to stay content with one woman. The problem of the peer can really be summarized with one statement. Fantasy is preferable to reality. Peer has his head in the clouds and prefers to stay there rather than touch their feet to the ground. Peter Pan is an obvious tale of the pure Eternus and paints him in a positive light. Von Franz also points to the story The Little Prince as a classic telling of the pure Eternus by an author who was a pure himself. After the description of the pure, I think it's probably rather obvious who in our story fits into this category. Scott is the typical pure Eternus who has failed to move past adolescence. Though we know his heart was broken by Envy Adams, we see that him and Kim didn't work out and his relationship with Knives is cut short by a new love interest. Scott has moved on from at least one girl because he has crafted a fantasy revolving around a mysterious woman, Ramona Flowers. When we first meet Ramona, she's a dream figure, a fantasy of Scott's. He later meets her and she appears to be his dream girl. Scott is also in no position to financially or responsibly move into adulthood. As we are first introduced to his living situation with Wallace, we see that almost everything in Wallace's apartment belongs to Wallace. Scott has no job, and when questioned about it, states that he's in between jobs. Scott is unable to commit to one woman, he's unable to hold down a job, and he has no possessions that would progress him into adulthood. Scott does have one thing though, he's a creative and he embodies this within his band Sex Babam. 
Where Scott takes off really cements Scott as a peer is when the story diverts from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Originally in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Scott is obsessed with Ramona and is willing to do anything to be with her. He overcomes his lack of ambition and participates in reality through working to win Ramona over and in the process moving past his adolescence. However, Scott takes off removes Scott from the story after the first battle against Ramona's evil ex. Instead of Scott winning the fight against Matthew Patel, He's whisked off by a future version of himself, and future Scott decides that life would be better without Ramona. Scott eventually gets a divorce from Ramona, and this affects him heavily. Old Scott attempts to keep young Scott from participating and committing to reality, in the form of committing to Ramona, and thus remaining in the state of a pure. Rather than participate in life and accept everything that entails, both joy and disappointment, Future Scott would rather stay in a fantasy world where reality can't hurt him and he can never experience disappointment. This is further emphasized when Scott gets back to his timeline and it's revealed that even older Scott has placed a barrier between young Scott and young Ramona. It's mentioned in The Problem of the Pure Eternus that one solution to breaking free from the pure is hard work. However, one common issue when one leaves this stage of life is the dissolving of the positive aspects of the pure. It can be the case that the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater. The peer at this point may experience a conversion to their antithesis and become what's called a cynic. The cynic is another one of the archetypes discussed by Carl Jung. In its positive manifestation, the cynic is represented by the image of a wise old man. This may be someone similar to Gandalf, Yoda, or Dumbledore. The negative manifestation of the cynic appears as a cynical old man. The negative manifestation of the cynic is one who has squandered his potential, is excessively rigid, and has become bitter towards the world. The negative peer and the negative cynics are two sides of the same coin. And we see this coin with Scott. Even older Scott is shown to be disciplined and has worked hard, but this is only in an attempt to stop Scott from marrying Ramona. He seems to have lost all the beauty of youth and is now left as a rigid old man who's trying to destroy his counterpart, the peer. Scott takes off wraps up the end of the season with a fight between young and even older Scott. With the help of Ramona and the rest of the cast, Young Scott is able to defeat his future counterpart and can finally kiss Ramona. All hope for Scott isn't lost. Instead of withdrawing from life as his older selves wanted him to do with Ramona, he's ready and willing to commit to Ramona and embrace life, even if it means he'll have to endure suffering. Scott takes a step towards adulthood, and although he may be leaving his pure nature behind, it seems like he'll still be able to integrate his creativity, potential, and youth into adulthood and participate in both life and love.